Hi, my name is Paul Brennan. I'm a branch head at the International Agency for Research on Cancer in Lyon, France. It's a WHO agency that conducts research into the distribution and causes of cancer throughout the world. Can you give us a simple outline of the research you carried out and what it was that prompted you to undertake that research? At IARC, we've been working on obesity as a cause of different cancers for, for decades, really. A lot of this has come from the EPIC cohort study. Um, the World Cancer Research Fund has supported a lot of this work in the past. I mean, in general, we know that obesity is an important cause of up to 12 different cancer types, most notably for cancers of the colon, the kidney, breast cancer after the menopause, esophageal, esophageal adenocarcinoma, particular risk with endometrial cancer. And in general, obesity has been estimated to cause about 6% of the cancer burden in a country like the UK. And helping people to lose weight you know, is an important strategy for, for cancer prevention. And most of the focus up to now has been on weight levels in middle age or later, as this is the typical age when, when cancer occurs. And what we wanted to understand was how obesity at different ages can affect cancer risk. And in, in particular, if there is any association with obesity in childhood. And, and secondly, one of the questions we had is if, if we did identify an association with childhood obesity and subsequent cancer risk, was this independent of, of obesity in adulthood or was this uh, in, in addition to obesity in, ad, in adulthood? Was this the first time this research had been done? And if not, how did you go about doing it slightly differently? Previous studies have mainly focused on childhood obesity and breast cancer because the, the association with obesity and breast cancer is quite complicated. And it does appear to be the case that obesity at different ages has different effects on, on breast cancer risk. So there's been a lot of interest in that particular topic on breast cancer. And we, we, we did not look at breast cancer in this study because it has been analyzed quite a lot by, by, by other groups. So five of the cancers that we looked at here, they have an established link with obesity in adulthood. And so the cancers that we, we looked at here, there were colorectal cancer, endometrial cancer, kidney cancer, pancreatic cancer, and ovarian cancer. We also included lung cancer in this analysis because there has been some emerging evidence, and particularly when looking at the genetics of obesity, that there is an association with obesity and lung cancer that, that, that we're trying to understand better. And we're trying to understand, is this because of an effect of obesity with smoking? And so most of the evidence up to now for these cancers has come from large cohort studies. Basically, you measure the weight of a lot of people and you follow them up for several years or even decades, and you measure the risk of, of different cancers um, based on the body weight of individuals when they joined the study. What's changed recently is that large amounts of genetic data have become available just in the last couple of years that have helped us understand the genetics of obesity. And this gives us the possibility to look at, at the relationship with obesity and cancer in a different way. We can look at genes that are associated with obesity and see whether these, uh, whether these genes are also associated with, with cancer risk. This type of study is called a Mendelian randomization study. And, and it, it, has, uh, it, it has certain benefits above the, uh, the, the normal sort of study that we look at in, in large observational cohort studies. Part of our study you know, took advantage of the EPIC cohort of 400,000 people, where we have information on their weight uh, when they joined the study in middle age, but also um, reports of, of their weight levels in, in, in young adulthood. What is it about Mendelian randomization that's so important and useful? In epidemiology, we typically look at an exposure uh, and we see what happens among, with, with the risk of cancer among people with different levels of that exposure. So, you know, for, for example, we might look at people with different levels of weight, of body weight, and follow them up for several decades to see whether the risk of developing cancer differs by, 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 the, body, by the level of body weight. Now, there's certain disadvantages with this approach, and that is one, one of the main advantages is that body weight is associated with many other factors. It might be associated with you know, your lifestyle, whether you drink alcohol, whether you smoke, your diet, your physical activity, et cetera. And teasing out these, the, the, these factors is, is often problematic. This is the problem of, of confounding. And, and one of the advantages that if you look at genes that are associated 
with, 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 with obesity. They will be different. Those genes will not be, will, probably won't be associated with other lifestyle factors. Um, so we, we break that link with, with confounding. And this idea goes back to the work of Gregor Mendel, in, uh, who was a monk in, in, in what's now the Czech Republic in the 19th century. Um, so that's where the, the name Mendelian randomization comes from. The results that came out showed there were consistent associations with endometrial and kidney cancer. Is there an explanation for why these two? So we observed an association for adult obesity using both the genetic studies and the observational approach for all six cancers. There's two aspects of of our results that I think are particularly interesting. One was that the genetic studies again showed that the level, the size of the effect was a lot more important, was a lot bigger than what was seen in the observational studies. And one conclusion that we have from this is that the level of obesity or the effect of obesity on cancer risk has been underestimated by the observational studies. Um, and that, you know, we might be, you know, obesity might be a far more important kind of cause of, of these cancers than we've previously thought. Now, for endometrial and kidney cancer, we also observe this effect with childhood obesity, especially for the genetic studies. We did not see, when we took account of adult obesity, we did not see this effect of childhood obesity in any of these cancers. So this is telling us that, um, that the effect of childhood obesity is not independent of the effect of adult obesity, and it's really just obesity over the life course at all ages. That, that seems to be important. And will you need further research to prove anything else? I think it's told us that you know, there is nothing particular about childhood obesity that is causing these cancers. So it's really obesity over the life course. The one area I think um, that really does, that we do need to understand further is this lung cancer effect, because it really does appear to be, um, to, to be an important effect. It was particularly strong for two subtypes of lung cancer, squamous cell lung cancer and small cell lung cancer. These are the subtypes that are, that are most strongly associated with smoking. And we think that the obesity effect on lung cancer is working through smoking. So somehow um, having a propensity to put on weight or to be obese seems to be increasing the likelihood of people starting to smoke and to continue smoking, perhaps even to smoke heavier. And that translates into an increased lung cancer risk. So we think that this particular aspect of, of, um, or, of the association on lung cancer certainly deserves more attention. Would it be fair to say that the link between smoking and obesity is just not widely known? The link of obesity causing smoking or increasing smoking uptake is not widely known. I mean, there have been a couple of recent publications on this in the last year or two, but it's not something that is, is taken into account when thinking of smoking prevention campaigns or how to ensure that, that young individuals don't, don't take up smoking. Um, so I, th I think trying to understand this better and why it is that uh, obesity seems to increase smoking uptake is, is, is something that we need to understand better. Is there any other research that you think you could influence the public with and how we could encourage the public to think about prevention differently? One thing we need to do is to come up with a clearer measure of how much of the cancer burden is being driven by obesity. The most recent estimate for the UK is that smoking accounts for about 15% of the overall cancer burden and obesity accounts for about 6% of the overall cancer burden. So obesity is second in the, you know, in the list of, of causes of cancer with respect to the size of the effect. Now, some of our results from the genetic studies indicate that that 6% might be a big underestimate. We think we may have underestimated it by maybe twofold. Um, so it's possible that obesity could be having a similar effect on the burden of cancer as tobacco. And that, I think, is an important message for the public, and it's important for the research community to really try and define what the overall effect of obesity is. And is that something on which you're making a good assumption based on the data, or does this require more research? The genetic studies are showing that we've underestimated it by a large amount. You know, the previous epidemiological studies were just based on one measure, usually based on one measure of, of obesity when people tended to join studies, you know, usually in middle age. Um, so I think you know, there are opportunities to go back to those studies and think of how much we've you know, missed 
um, by just taking up one measure of obesity in middle age. Um, and, you know, we perhaps using other study designs, perhaps if we have studies that have measured obesity over the life course, that would be another way to try and estimate, you know, have a better measure of obesity and perhaps come up with a clearer measure of, of its effect on, on subsequent cancer risk. So what's the next piece of research for you? And what are you focusing on next? For me, I think there's, there's a couple of areas of research into this whole area around obesity and cancer that, that I'm particularly interested to see how they evolve. There's three particular areas that are, that are being undertaken at IARC that, that I'm particularly keen to see. Uh, one is research within the EPIC cohort on the effects of ultra-processed foods and their particular cancer risk. This, this, this is quite a new area of research and there does appear to be quite a lot of emerging evidence that ultra-processed foods, one of the effects they have is to increase obesity. Um, so one area that I, I'd like to see is you know, more work on ultra-processed foods and to what extent their risk with cancer works through increase in obesity. Secondly, a lot of the genetic data that we're working on is showing some quite intriguing, um, important effects for, for other factors that are often associated with obesity. Um, that form part of what's called metabolic syndrome. And this includes things like diabetes and insulin resistance. And some of our evidence, emerging evidence, is that these other factors uh, are also driving the risk in particular cancers. So this is something that we're following up on now, and it could lead to a recognition that diabetes is an important risk for, for, for multiple cancers. Um, finally, a new study that I'm working on is trying to understand the specific mechanisms by which obesity drives cancer risk. So some of our current studies, when we look at, at, at mutations in, in cancers, they seem to show that, that unlike things like tobacco, which causes lots of mutations in the cancers that it causes, obesity doesn't appear to influence the mutation pattern of cancers. Now, this is curious because we always thought that most things that cause cancer, they tend to cause cancer by causing mutations. Obesity doesn't appear to do that. So it seems to be promoting cancer in another way that is not by causing mutations. So we're, we're trying to understand whether obesity is really working on the microenvironment of tissue that allows uh, cancers to emerge. Um, and if we can understand how obesity is influencing the microenvironment, um, this might suggest ways that we could reverse its effects on the microenvironment. So this is a new area of research that, 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 that I'm working on at the moment.